Hello everyone, John Odom, drum set and percussion teacher here with Groove with Passion Drum Lessons. And today I'm going to go ahead and do a different type of lesson. Um, if you've seen any, any of my previous videos, um, you might notice that my hi-hat and snare drum are on the other side of the drum set. I've actually got this set up left-handed. Normally I have my hi-hat over here, snare drum over here because I'm, I'm a right-handed drummer. So today's lesson is going to be about building your weaker hand. For me, that's my left hand. Uh, for a lot of drummers, that's their left hand. For left-handed drummers, which I have two students who are left-handed, that is their right hand. Now, there are some drummers, a few, who both hands, you know, they have both hands that are pretty equal or they're ambidextrous. You're very fortunate, blessed if that's the case. But for many of us, we've got one hand that is stronger than the other. And I've got a few students right now working on songs, and the songs they're working on uh, require fast playing, you know, playing fast single strokes. Okay, single stroke, single stroke roll, or you know, fast single strokes, either for maybe most of the song or at least a portion of the song. Um, along that note, too, uh, recently I've been telling most of my students, because uh, again, everybody's working on different things, right? But um, the ones that are working on songs that do require fast single stroke, I've really been putting an emphasis on building up your single stroke roll. I'm just going to say this. Um, <clears throat> every rudiment is important. There's no such thing as an unimportant rudiment, okay? However many you use on the drum set, whatever type of music you play, rudiments are always, you know, this is what we do. So every rudiment is important. I will say that, that if, you're gonna, if you're gonna put an emphasis on a rudiment to practice or a rudiments to practice, make sure you're practicing your single stroke roll because you're, you're playing the single stroke roll, either with, it may not always be with both hands. You're playing an eighth note groove on the hi-hat you're playing single stroke rolls with the hand you're playing on hi-hat or ride some. That's, those are single strokes. So always practice your single stroke. So I came up with a couple of ideas here to help my students. So again, I'm a right-handed drummer, so th this feels a lot different, right? So what I've done is I've shifted the hi-hat over this side, okay? I've just moved my snare drum on this side of the bass pedal, okay? versus being on the left side of the pedal, now on the right side of the pedal. My left foot is now on the bass pedal, okay? Right foot on the hi-hat. Um, now, for you drummers that play double bass, if you're used to playing with your left foot, it's not a big deal. It's like, okay, so what? Um, I play a little bit of double bass, but not a lot. So it definitely is different for me. Um, now, I'm not going to try to get fancy with the groove here. Okay, so I'm about trying to play the same type of groove, especially if you play the more complex grooves, that you can play, say, when you're on your strong side, okay? Um, this is, the, the focus of this lesson is to, is to give you some ideas on how to build your weaker hand, right? So what I'm gonna do here, <clears throat> I'm just gonna play a simple 16th note groove. I'm gonna lead with my left hand, though. That's the key. So I'm gonna play in those single strokes, right? Single stroke roll but I'm gonna lead with my left hand. That's the key. That's a good way to build up your weaker hand is because we're used to you know, leading with our stronger hand. Okay, we can do that all day, but that doesn't really benefit your weaker hand. If you wanna be able to play faster singles, we can only go as fast as our weaker hand. So how do we, how do we push the envelope? How do we improve our speed? Well, one way is to work on your weaker hand. If you improve your weaker hand speed, you're gonna improve your single stroke speed overall, right? And this is one idea. Um, I'm planning on filming a few more videos along this same idea, but this is um, one, this is an idea that I came up with recently, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys. So, bass drum's gonna play on one and three, all right? My left hand's gonna go back between the hi-hat and the snare, I'm going to play the snare on two and four. Um, now, for some of you more experienced drummers, if you guys want to start this at a faster tempo, that's fine. I teach you know, drum students at all levels. I've got some beginners um, who definitely have some a challenge with this, right? 
So you don't have to, don't feel obligated to start at a super fast speed. Um, I've got my sound render on 80 beats per minute, and I'm gonna go ahead and play this with quarter notes on the app, okay, with the metronome. So again, if you need to start slower, if you need to start at 60 beats per minute, 70, that's fine. You have to start at a tempo that's comfortable for you. There's no point in starting at 150 if it's a challenge for you to play 150, you know, right-handed, you're not going to be able to play 150 left-handed. So don't, don't, you know, don't try to push it too hard, but start at a realistic tempo, okay? So this is 80 beats per minute, okay? Get settled in with that tempo. It's going to be like this. One, two, ready, play. with a timer that's another thing i've been telling my students lately you know we can sit in here and practice an idea and just okay i'm just going to practice this groove or this fill or i'm going to work on my single strokes and if you don't have an idea of how long your what the duration is you know, how, how how long how do you know how you're doing how much time have you spent on it? so setting a timer especially you know with your phone whatever you need to use set a timer do it for like you know, maybe three minutes or something. Yeah, you know, maybe the length of a song. The average length of a song is three to three and a half minutes. So you could do this for three minutes, right? And then you gradually increase your tempo. Now, the idea, again, the, the idea is to, and also challenge yourself with this. Try to make this smooth, okay? I'm, I'm not bashing the snare, all right? And I'm not saying you have to play super quiet, but try to play with control, okay? Not... Try to play with control, okay? Try to play as controlled on the other side as you do on your stronger side. It's gonna be a challenge, but it's good for us to challenge ourselves like that. Let's go up to 85 beats per minute. A little bit faster. Anytime you change tempos, give it, you know, at least a few bars to go ahead and kind of get yourself settled in, lock in with that tempo, always important. Okay. Here we go. Continue to push that up. Now, once you get to a, a tempo and it starts to kind of fall apart, <clears throat> that's your fastest tempo at that point. So that, that's where your threshold, we all have a threshold somewhere, okay? So that's your threshold. So you can back it down. And what you can do is once you reach your threshold, whatever tempo, if it's 100, 110, 90, whatever it might be, then you gradually build it up. Maybe every couple days go up two or three beats per minute. And as you practice this, you'll find that your, you know, your, your, your hands will cooperate. Again, don't worry about trying. Now, if you want to play something more complex, that's fine. Um, but I'm just keeping it simple. Bass on one and three, snare on two and four. Nice, smooth, steady, um, 16th. That's really the focus. It's not trying to come up with new grooves. I, I, you know, I'm not going to play like this at a gig, obviously. Um, or in church or anything, right? But it, it's a practice tool, right? Now, for you guys that have acoustic drum kits, this is pretty easy to do, okay? Not so easy if you have an electric kit. I mention that because some of my students have electric kits, okay? I have, I have set up several electric kits for my students, okay? Which is something I do as a teacher. I offer that for a small fee. Uh, student gets a new kit, I will come set it up for them, whether it's acoustic or electric. So, what do we do? What about you guys that have an electric kit? Well, let me show you. Rearrange here a little bit real fast, okay? 
I'm going to put my snare back where it was. I'm going to bring my floor tom back in. <clears throat> and I've got my, I'm going to go ahead and put my practice pad for now on the floor tom. And again, if you want to use this as a way to practice, that's fine. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and do that. And what you can do, okay, again, on an electric kit, since it's not convenient because the your, your hi-hat is going to be on the frame. Well, you can't really move it over to here. It's, it's, no, don't do that. Bad idea. Just do this. Okay, so your uh, low tom is going to be sitting over here. You've got a high tom. Your pad is high tom, mid tom, and right about here somewhere is your low tom, right? Well, just play like this. Same idea. I'm going to go up to 90 for this, by the way, okay? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna play this on the pad. Same beat. So I'm right-handed, but I'm still gonna play it left-handed. One, two, three, play. You can do this. You don't have to move anything, okay? Even on an acoustic kit. Again, I recommend moving this snare and hi-hat, moving your floor tom over. Not that hard to do. As long as you have enough space. If you're in a tight space, might not might be difficult, might not be uh, convenient. But if you've got enough space to move your floor tom and hi-hat and snare, why not? It's a cool exercise, I think. Now, you can also <clears throat> just play on the floor tom, okay? Um, and again, I'm trying to simulate as best as I can the different scenarios. I do the practice pad is sort of like playing on an electric kit. But of course, an electric kit, all the, you know, the heads are the same, meaning you're going to have the same rebound, okay, on all the heads. So, um, you know, that's not going to change. But even, again, with a goose kit, you just say, you know what, I'm just going to just do this on, on the fourth home. That's fine. Let's go up to 95. Get your own tempo. A little bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. carry that on for as long as, long as you want to. Um, and of course, there's other combinations if you want to lead on the high tom, you know, like so. If you want to... You can do that. I mean, it's not a complicated exercise. Not every exercise, not everything we do for practice has to be super complex. Um, Sometimes you can take a simple exercise, um, and this is pretty simple, and it's not real difficult. Um, just takes a little bit of ingenuity, creativity. Sometimes we gotta think outside the box. We should be doing that as musicians anyway, um, you know, to create new grooves, new fills, new ideas. Um, and, um, but I think this, you know, hopefully this will help. Because again, a lot of drummers, not every drummer, some drummers have two strong hands, and you guys are blessed and fortunate. Um, but I know a lot of my students do have a weaker hand, like I do. And I, I tell them up front, you know, I say, this is my problem child, you know. Uh, and I, sometimes when we're practicing, you know, if I see at the academy, or Orlando Fine Arts Academy where I teach, um, you know, sometimes I'll bring the snare drum over in, in the side of the room there where we have the two drum kits that face each other. And I'll put the practice pad on there, and we'll sit now face each other, playing on the practice pad. And I'll point to whatever hand is their weaker hand, I'll say, that's your problem, child. With, with, with my stick, I'll say, that's your problem, child. This is my problem, child. Um, and I always like to acknowledge that with my students. That, you know, um, yeah, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a lifelong student. 
you know, I'm still learning, still growing, still working on improving my playing and teaching skills. Uh, and that's something that we should always be doing. I always encourage my students to do that. So, for lessons like this, <clears throat> if you're looking to get started, if you've never picked up a pair of drumsticks before, um, if you want to learn to play drum set, if you're going into, say, high school, or even middle school, middle school or high school, you're getting into band, you want to learn how to play snare drum, you want to learn how to play rudiments, uh, you want to learn how to play a proper technique, if you want to learn to play in a band, um, if you want to learn to um, just play for fun, uh, whatever your aspirations might be. Uh, I'm currently teaching at, I am currently enrolling new students, okay? I'm currently teaching at Orlando Fine Arts Academy. We are a music and art school. We're in Lake Nona uh, on Mercusi Road, okay? And I'm up there normally four days a week. And uh, we teach music lessons, art lessons, voice lessons, and dance lessons. So we are a music and art school. We do a lot of, have, offer a lot of great programs at our school. Um, so I'm up there four days a week. If you live in the Lake Nona area, um, you can come see me at the school and love to work with you. It'd be, be an awesome uh, time, a lot of fun. I also do teach with Lessons in Your Home. And Lessons in Your Home offers in-home lessons and also virtual lessons, okay? Uh, I do teach here online with Zoom. And I also teach private students. So I have students that I teach directly where we don't go through any other entity. Um, and I've been background checked, certified safe to work with children. I've been teaching for 13 years. And this is, you know, I, I love playing and teaching the drums. So if you're looking at wanting to learn to play this instrument, if you've been playing for a while and wanting to improve your technique, come up with some new ideas, learn some new grooves and fills, some new songs, the contact information will be on the video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Hope you have a great day.